Phineas and Ferb, the movie, Candace Against the Universe, the movie, <laughs> is finally out on Disney+, Plus, and that is definitely how the title is said. And there goes my script. So before this new movie came out, I re-watched all of Phineas and Ferb, and in a weird way, I basically relived my childhood through it. Revisiting this show and seeing all of those fantastic moments again really made me appreciate this show and how it really did affect my childhood. And the main effect it had on my childhood was um, making me buy a whole lot of merchandise. And Perry, you can't get away from me. Mainly making me buy- Perry, don't you- No, Perry! it had on my childhood was making me buy a lot of merchandise. Perry, no! Come on, come on, Perry. Just get on my head, Perry. Come on. Perry! So when they announced a new Phineas and Ferb movie was coming out, my mind actually exploded. There it goes, there it goes. That was a, that was a, a recreation. Using, using special effects. <laughs> and when they started dropping trailers and clips online, I did not want to know any spoilers. So I literally became like the sergeant from that episode where they get busted. Because every time I saw something pop up about the film, I was just like... <laughs> but I finally watched this movie that I have been waiting for and hyping up for so long. And I really liked it. Now, I didn't absolutely love it or think it was perfect, like Playing With Fire is. What a great movie that is. <laughs> but even though this movie wasn't perfect, it was still just such a good return for these characters. So let's go ahead and dive into the review. And uh, I will be talking about spoilers, so um, if, uh, if you don't want to hear any of those, you know what to do. So what I love most about this movie is, well, Candace. <laughs> I really like Candace in the show. Now, <laughs> granted, there are a lot of people who don't really like Candace in the show. I have no idea why. Okay, yes, she can be annoying sometimes, but I've still always liked Candace, but this movie made me like her and understand her character more than I ever have before. You actually feel for Candace in this movie because her emotional scenes and her character arc are terrific. The movie sets up in the opening that she doesn't feel special next to her brothers, and she feels like a failure. She literally breaks down in this movie, and every time you feel the emotions. And her arc of learning that she is special is very effective and very well done throughout this story. Also, this movie gives the best sibling dynamics we've seen from Phineas Ferb and Candace. I think their relationship in this movie is just so great, and by the end, watching Phineas and Ferb show that they love their sister and telling her that she is special is just so emotionally satisfying because we love their friendship so much. And since we're speaking about great dynamics, we get to see how Doofenshmirtz interacts with Isabella. And I was not expecting them to have this really fun dynamic, but they do. And while I did want a little more of it, I think the final payoff with Isabella giving Doofenshmirtz the patch was really sweet. Another great thing about this movie is just that it is incredibly meta. Like, there are just countless amazing meta jokes in this movie. Now, I don't want to explain the joke because that would make it unfunny and I'm already unfunny enough. So I'll just say the one joke that really got me was one that involved the creators of the show and warp speed on a ship. I mean, that joke just had me rolling. Do, pe do people say rolling still? Do people, do people actually say Roland? I'm just, I'm just trying to be cool. So just, do people say Roland? I think they still say Roland. 
Also, there were some great references to Milo Murphy's Law, the creator's other show. Like how they played the song Chop Away at My Heart and had Trucker Ted make a cameo. And while Milo Murphy's Law never got super popular, I really like that the creators went out of their way to hide these little Easter eggs in there. Also, you can't review a Phineas and Fur movie without reviewing the songs. That's actually a crime in seven states. So I will just go ahead and say, most of the songs are certified bangers, dude! Why did I just put on, like, an 80s teen voice? I don't even know what I'm doing right now, because I'm just gonna keep on talking, but if I keep on going too far, I might just make the video extra long, and that's gonna make it very hard to edit, so then I'll probably have to do a very abrupt cut of I don't know what just happened. <laughs> but seriously, the songs in this movie are so good. We get Such a Beautiful Day, which sounds generic at first, but I love how it switches music genres and it really adds this level of excitement to it. We also get this song by Doofensmertz, but I, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, what was it called? Oh yeah, it's called Fire Adult Day! Yes, yes Adult no. Day! And, and it's it's good. It's a good song. And the final song of this movie called Us is amazing. And every single time I watch this movie, when that final song comes on, I just want to get up and dance, man. But it's not like I actually did that, though. It's not like I actually did that, because that would be embarrassing. And I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> but this song really does encapsulate is that a, is that how you say the word yeah is it though <laughs> okay whatever this song just encapsulate oh no i can't even say it <laughs> okay whatever i'm just trying to say that the song is a fantastic end to the movie Whew. I got through that. I was really having trouble getting my words trout. Oh man. And this final song also brings home the big theme of the movie, which is when it feels like the whole universe is against you, you just have to keep going. You have to keep persevering. Like, did John Cena give up when he was chasing those kids on the pink tricycle through the forest? No. And we shouldn't give up when life comes at us hard either. Be honest, you were just inspired, weren't you? But seriously, the theme of this movie is very resonant with the time it's being released. Now, I don't know if you know this, but like, you know, some some bad things have happened this year? And I know you probably already know what the bad things that have happened this year are, but I'll say it anyway. It's that there's still no announcement for Playing With Fire 2. What were y'all thinking of? But seriously, the movie aired right when its theme could have maximum potential to leave an impact on you, and I think that's really neat. Also, I love how Perry tags along on this mission, but none of them ever know it, and he's constantly saving their lives, and they're just completely oblivious. It's just such an interesting dynamic. I don't say dynamic too many times. You say dynamic too many times. <laughs> and Perry gets some of the most fun action scenes of the entire movie, and it really makes me wish my Perry did something, but he literally does nothing all day. <laughs> Man, I wish I could understand what he's trying to say. He's probably just saying he loves me in plat platypuglish. That's platypus English, idiot. And the final big positive I have for this movie is just that the third act is so much fun. Like, once they return to Earth and they have their big showdown, it just, it delivers such an action-packed and emotional finale that I had a blast with. But now let's, but now let's talk about, but unfortunately, let's just go ahead and talk about the reasons why, oh my gosh. but unfortunately, let's just go ahead. Come on. <laughs> I can't say it. But unfortunately... But unfortunately, let's just... <laughs> I just I can't say this stupid line! But unfortunately... <laughs> Come on. What is wrong with me? But unfortunately, let's just go... <laughs> Come on, I can't say it. It's... 
Okay, but unfortunately, now let's discuss what held this movie back from being great in my opinion. But now let's unfortunately talk about what held this movie back from being great in my opinion. I nailed it! <laughs> the biggest thing that held this movie back in my opinion was just that the story is only okay. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, okay. okay! Like, it was fun enough, but I don't think the story was quite there yet. And a lot of the twists were very obvious. And the story even feels like copied versions from episodes of the show, such as Queen of Mars. In that episode, Candace doesn't feel special. She goes to space, befriends some aliens who then turn on her, and then she learns she's special. Does that sound familiar to you? So in all, I just think the story was only okay, okay. when I really wanted it to be great. You know, that didn't work as good as I thought it was gonna. There's also a lot of jokes that don't land. Hey, just like most of my jokes. <laughs> but seriously, some of the jokes in this movie feel super forced. And other jokes just keep on going on and on and on and on and on until the point where it's not even funny anymore because it just goes on for such a long time and it just completely loses the fact that it's funny because it just keeps on going and going and going and as it just keeps on going, it's like, why doesn't it end? But no, it doesn't end. It just keeps on going and 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 now going, going doesn't even feel like a real word because I've said it so many times. Going, is that, is that how you even, is that how you even say it anymore? I don't, I don't know. I think I just broke my mind. Also, as much as I love Candace's arc in this movie, I don't actually think it makes sense in the timeline of the show. Like, Candace chooses not to bust her brothers and gosh darn it my script. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna read it. I'm just gonna read it from down there. Like, Candace actually chooses to not bust her brothers and seems to give up on it. But the weird thing is that this movie takes place like in the middle of the summer because in the opening song she says things from season three are still coming soon. Was that a voice crack? Coming soon. I mean, coming soon. <laughs> and my manly voice. Because I don't have voice cracks. But it's just annoying because her arc works as this really perfect finale. But it's not the finale. It's in like the middle of the show. So it just doesn't make any sense. And I think that's just kind of bad writing. So there are a few problems that hold this movie back from being great in my opinion. But... Overall, I did have a really good time watching it. And I saw that the creator said that if this movie does good, they may make another Phineas and Ferb movie. And while I don't think Candace Against the Universe is perfect or even a great movie, if they make another movie, I promise I will be there opening day because these guys have created a universe <laughs> that I will always love and always want to come back to. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my movie review for Candace Against the Universe, and while I don't think it's as amazing as it could have been, it was still just an absolute blast, and I do definitely recommend that you check this movie out. So, unlike Phineas and Ferb, my summer <laughs> is not unlimited, and so I have just recently gone back to school, and I just wanted to let anyone who actually cares about my channel, I don't know if anyone actually does, but if you do, just know that videos are probably gonna slow down a little bit as I go back to school. It's just kind of getting hard to balance school, work, YouTube, a social life, and still finding time to watch Playing With Fire five times a day. Like, it's honestly, a, it's a real struggle, I'm not gonna lie. Wait, how many Playing With Fire jokes have I made in this video? Because I think, I think I hit a new record! High five! Cell 5! But anyways, thanks for all of y'all that have continued to support my channel over the last few months, and even though I'm pretty cringy, <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoy that cringiness. <laughs> but seriously, thanks for watching, and goodbye.